everybody, welcome back to episode 81 on this Saturday. Uh, I hope your day was great. We finally had warm weather. Well, 50s warm, I would yeah, say. I mean, uh, yeah, kind of ridiculously warm. Yeah, I love all the memes of people in um, showing people in Chicago when it's 50 degrees out. And it's like, no sh- coats, Wearing shorts. shorts, barbecuing, everything, because it's just like, woo, spring's here. There was somebody walking their dog across the street yesterday wearing shorts and it wasn't 50 yesterday no it was definitely well, chilly warm, yesterday um, well yeah uh but i'm Compared happy to, to see that. grass i'm happy you to can see, see about that much grass on i can the see sidewalk. some grass <laughs> yeah i mean not on the sidewalk yeah on the lawn. uh you can see some grass and it's melting off the roof of our garage so um all the snow that yeah. was piled up there it, it we were kind of getting worried because the, oh, sure. the snow was so much on our roof of our garage um we just weren't sure, like, is it going to cave in, you know, yeah. kind of thing, and um, that would be bad. But where we live, you can't park on the street. Um, you can, but you have to, like, call it in, and you, you only a, get, like, a certain... Essentially a permit, basically. Yeah, and you only get a certain amount of times you can park out front um, on the street. Otherwise, there's no parking in our town overnight. Yeah, um, it's kind of ridiculous. It's very ridiculous. Uh, and many times growing up, we've always had, you know, if we didn't have... A garage, or if we accidentally left our car out in front by accident, instead of putting it in the garage, we'd wake up with a ticket. So. And the irony of the overnight parking ban is it's supposed to have something to do with safety. Like the theory is people could hide between cars or whatever. But of course, so as a result of them not wanting people to park overnight, that means that like young single people who live in apartment buildings end up having to park their car in a lot blocks away and walk home in the dark. Yeah. You know, so I, I never got the safety rationale. I have a terrible, um, that just reminded me of a terrible s- story in my youth. In I don't rem- recommend this, but when I had my first apartment in the next town over, I didn't have parking. I parked across the street in a lot, which is fine. Um, but I worked from 3 to 11 at night, so I didn't get home till later. And obviously I was young. We sometimes went out afterwards, whatever. And you had to be out of the lot by 7.30 a.m. Oh, the next yeah. morning. The chances of me doing that were like slim to none. Uh, even though I set my alarm, I was just like, so unfortunately I got a few tickets um, there. Fast forward to, then I was like more responsible, whatever, I did that. Fast forward, my parents were going out of town on vacation, so I stayed at their house. I parked my car in front of their house. I called it in, because I was like, I'm responsible, I'm calling it in. And I had so many tickets that I hadn't paid that I got the boot. <laughs> so I was like, I just basically invited them to my car. And was to just like, the boot. yeah. And then yeah. I was like, why didn't I just park in my parents' garage, brought their car out front and called their Call car their in. Car. And then, yeah. So um, complicated, though. it was in my whole paycheck that time. Went to went paying to... tickets. Well, that, that's why I hate farmer's market. Because I used to, oh, yes. <laughs> I used to live in an apartment right out of law school too, and I, so I was working really long hours, and I lived in an apartment building um, that didn't have parking, so I had to park in this lot right across the street. Very convenient, super convenient. But for and the farmers market in Oak Park goes like eight months out of the year. It's the <laughs> most ridiculous thing. It totally. It I was just thinking like, are they opening soon? Forever. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they start at at, at uh, well, I don't know what time they start, but I had to move my car at like six thirty in the morning every Saturday, you know, and so, you know, you're working long hours, maybe you want to go out on Friday night. After and just want to relax really long, and yeah. be able to sleep in. And it's like, and nope. And the thing is, I worked most Saturdays anyway, because that was the nature of the job, but you didn't have to be in the office at nine o'clock in the morning. You know, if you were going in on a Saturday, you'd go in at noon, you know, to get a few hours of work done. Right. So that made me very unhappy. And as a result, I will never, <laughs> ever, ever patronize a farmer's market. He doesn't anywhere. like farmer's markets. <laughs> the other thing that drove me nuts about our <laughs> farmer's market is that it was like all these, you know, kind of fussy, you know, high-end overpriced um, things that came from like little boutique farms in Michigan and Wisconsin. And I'm like, we live in Illinois. You can yeah. drive... From our house to a farm in like an hour. Right. Why is it only people from Michigan and Wisconsin at our farmer's market it's, here? It, it is very true. Because they sold, there's... you know, fancy soaps and little... Jams. Yeah. Chutneys. Right. right. <laughs> it's like we live in a major agricultural state. So when you And our farmer's your, market um, was for people from Michigan. No offense just... to Michigan. 
Yeah, did you have to like park just on the street later, later further down the block? Yeah, and it was, it must have been legal because it was a municipal parking lot. Everybody parked there overnight. There were dozens of cars. And it's not like you could, that you probably couldn't blow off because then it'd be like, you'd definitely get tickets because somebody's trying to set up their tent. Right. Their cars. And, and the thing is that um, you could always find, when you had, a, you had to do it early. But you could always find parking on the street because, of course, it was illegal for people to park right. overnight. So we were there. We had to get our cars out of there before the folks showed up for the farmer's market. So no one else was parking on the street at that hour. I would have hated that. But just the fact of having to get out and I move was, the car at 6. I know. And I was incensed having to move my car even though I didn't have... It was just a parking lot. They just... I think that it was... Oh, you know where it was? It was... Um, at the um, district office, not the park, the park district, or the recre- recreational the rec center. center, whatever. So they needed to that like was, get people out of there, some people who patronized or had that parking space. The, so that's the, why I had to get out. That was the first place I saw my brother Tom's band. I mean, I, I've, I've never seen been my in brother that place. Tom. I never went in there. They played there on a Friday night in the. Well, it was probably st- maybe late seventies or early eighties. I had seen him play before with different groups of people, including someone who is now one of our brothers in law, right. who is a drummer. Um, but uh, but they played. He played with. It, it was a different. They did a different sound at that time. But the guys who he ended up in a band with for a long period of time, where they eventually ended up doing kind of more of a like a British invasion kind of Beatles and Stones thing. But that and the song that I distinctly remember them playing like as we came in they played that car song um uh oh just what i needed i was i was I blanking for a moment oh they played a lot of cars um they, but that was the song they were playing just what i needed when we walked in i don't know but anyway so yeah um and fun fact about that band one of the guys in that band is now and has been for many years in a in a Beatles tribute band called the Liverpool Legends. Yes. And they are they have a regular standing gig in Branson, Missouri. I know. True I was just story. thinking about that because like they and by the way shut down too because of the coronavirus. Uh, I imagine. By the way, if you like Beatles tribute bands, I'm going to tell you they are pretty good. Because Kevin, who was in my well, they band, have to be because if they're doing it for a living, yeah. I mean, they can't be horrible. Yeah, and Kevin and some of the other guys too. I mean, they've been playing this music forever. So yeah. they're and they do kind of like what was the big Beatles tribute band that toured all over the place back in the, um, you know, all the way back in the eighties. Well, they do a whole show where it's like sort of like the evolution of the Beatles. So it's not just like one snippet of their career. Um, so you know, whatever. If you like the Beatles, Liverpool legend. There you go. Look them up. They and, probably got YouTube channels. And, and I don't know why I went off on this bizarre tangent, <laughs> but the, one of the funny things about that group is somehow or another they connected with um, a woman who's like uh, George Harrison's aunt or something like that, oh, who funny. lived in downstate Illinois. That's like in, I don't know, Peoria or something like that. I think she may have been featured on that Wild Chicago oh, show yes, once yes, yes. that was on our local PBS section. Anyway, I, I don't recall her name offhand. There's a Facebook page for Liverpool Legends, but she became like their kind of like their manager or whatever. That's awesome. Yeah, so they have a genuine so have connection, a connection to the Beatles to the on Beatles. top of it. That's awesome. And Kevin is the guy who pulled me up on stage when they were playing down in Champagne. Didn't we talk about <laughs> we did. that at Mabel's yeah. in Champagne? Yeah. So fun. Yeah. Um, so, so we had a great day today. Um, did we? we did because um, we lost slept in. Uh, you're we... never ever <laughs> supposed to disclose it. People think if you're an adult, you're not supposed to sleep in. It's such a great thing because for so many <laughs> decades, you cannot yeah. sleep yeah, when past you have little kids. Right? Yeah, six o'clock. Your kid is up on the weekend, rain or shine, and I'm ready to start the day, and you're just like, nah, I can't. So I. Um, I love sleeping in games. So anyway, so that happened, so and, that then, happened. <laughs> and then and um, then caught up some, on some shows as we do on Saturday mornings, and um, one of which is um, the Pioneer Woman, which David loves. Uh, a lot of I times, forgot that you even watched it today. As yeah, a matter of fact, a lot of the did. stuff I probably wouldn't make of hers just because it's not like Weight Watcher friendly at all. Um, sometimes the fun of is just counting how many sticks of butter yeah, is in right, right. any exactly. kind of thing. It's like you put two sticks of butter in the cake mix and now there's a stick of butter in the frosting and now you've got, you know, so... Um, this is very true. Yeah, and uh, now because of the coronavirus, her kids have been actually video recording it. So it's actually been more enjoyable because 
they make mistakes right. and she forgets to put ingredients in and stuff like that. So I always watch that on Saturday morning. And, you know, and that I will give them credit for that because, I mean, I think things have been, I don't know how it's been in Oklahoma in terms of the rules or whatever, but they have been, you know, very cautious about the whole thing. And it may just be because the production company didn't want to send a crew there or something right. like that. But there are other, like, you know, reality shows where they are filming with a, with a professional crew. And it's complicated because people have to get tested and people have to, you know, wear masks while they're filming and everything mm -hmm. like that. But they managed to do the show in their little bubble with, with so that they don't have to do that. And they definitely have a bubble because they're out in the middle of nowhere. They're so out in the middle of like nowhere. And they all, it's not like you're in a dense population. Right, and they all live under the same roof. Right. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I mean, I, I give them credit for being, um, and I guess not just you, being cautious, but like being good examples. You know yeah. what I mean? So that like, because she's obviously a pretty popular person. And I guess if you're stuck in quarantine with somebody who looks likes to cook all likes the time, that's cook, like an yeah. advantage to you. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, so for sure. That. Although I noticed that over time, there's a lot more shortcuts. Yes. I mean, she's always kind of done that where she would use like prepackaged mm -hmm. things and like that. But she seems to do a lot more of it now. Definitely. Which, you know, I mean, again, under the circumstances, it's yeah. not that surprising. And I think it's also helpful, too, because a lot of people don't have time to make every little bit of thing from scratch um, start to finish. So oh, um, That's true. But we did more than just um, sleep sit on in the couch. and sit on the couch. <laughs> We worked out. We did work out. Yeah, which was, for, it, we worked out all this week too, um, so that it wasn't true. everything, but um, I'm doing a workout program and I have 49 out of 50 workouts done and today was the 49th one, tomorrow I'm doing 50 even though, should be taking a rest day, I'm finishing it because I bought, a, or I was gifted a sweatshirt That's right. that is a finisher of the program, um, so, and I have not even tried it on. Because I was like, you didn't even deserve to try it on you. I'm finished it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's too late to return. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no now I'm just good. Now that's all I'm going to wear. <laughs> well, one big advantage this week, I mean, the thing that's really complicated working out lately has been just the snow. I mean, we've had, you know, I've had to get up and go shovel snow instead mm -hmm. of working out way more often than I would like. So thankfully we didn't have any snow this week. Although we did have rain overnight last night, which is pretty wild. Yeah. Um, and I looked at my phone, I was like, rain? What's yeah, going on? Yeah, it wasn't like hard rain, mm -mm. but because we looked out, we did check it out. We normally, at a certain point, we just close all the curtains. <laughs> like, we don't want any, we don't yeah. want to be aware of the outside world. Although, when we were going to bed, I did notice like the street light was like reflecting off of the tree. Right. And there was like drips of right. um, thing, and I was like, oh, if it wasn't, you know, crazy, I would go out there and try to take a picture, but, because um, well, that would have been it, good. It's cool. funny that you talk about having to get up early and how especially when the kids were little, you know, um, it didn't matter whether it was a weekend or you had time off, you'd still have to get up early. But what I really hated about that, uh, I didn't hate having kids, but what I hated about it was like the time change was, I hate the time, you know, changing the clocks anyway. It's coming. <laughs> and it's coming. That's what, what I was thinking of. It's not, it's not this coming weekend, but the weekend after March 14th. And uh, that always drives me nuts. And the one in the spring is the worst. Because, you know, it, 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 getting an extra hour of sleep or, you know, being able to stay up a little bit later, that doesn't bother me so much. Mm -hmm. But no matter what, you're getting up earlier and it's like ridiculously dark out. And um, you always think like, at least I do, I'm like, yesterday at this time it was an hour later. You know, yeah. it's kind of like... And I know, you know, everybody likes it when it's light out in the afternoon. But, I, you know, my feeling is... I'm working at 4 o'clock in the afternoon or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It doesn't matter to me whether it's sunny <laughs> exactly. outside or not. It's not like I'm going outside saying, oh, the sun's still up. Yeah. Woo, and, I'm going to get out and enjoy it. I've been doing that for, you know, 34 years. So um, I, it doesn't mean that much to me that the sun goes down a little bit later. Uh, what right. I hate awesome. is how dark it is in the morning. And it totally screws up my sleep schedule. Yeah. But the, I guess the flip side is when you have little kids... You don't get the benefit of the time change in the fall. Yes. Because they're not they're not looking at the clock. They yeah. don't care that it's really only eight o'clock instead of nine o'clock or whatever. So uh, I guess you know you pick up. There's some slight benefit there. Uh, the slight benefit in the spring because you're up early anyway. Mm -hmm. And but it it gets it catches up with you in the fall. At least when you have adult children, none of that matters. Right. But uh, I remember going out and running on the high school track when we would change the clocks in the fall. 
And no one would be there because it was ridiculously early in the morning. But we had to be up anyway because yep. of babies and whatnot. <laughs> but I hate the time change. I, I know too. everybody likes yeah. it when the sun is out later in the day. But that's going to happen anyway. Right, it's coming. Whether <laughs> and it used to be that you, the time change was the end of October and the end of April. So they're like six months apart. And at least that way, you know, it wasn't as dramatic a difference in the morning. Um, when when we change the clock, so that's my complaint for the day. And actually, I also um, already saw Easter candy out, so there's that. Um. Well, that's I mean, I guess if you're in Lent, then advertising for Easter isn't yeah. that bad. But no, but I mean, but it's but also. I think they were doing that like right after, as soon as um, Valentine's Day was out. Then it's just like. Well, and come. nobody's buying Easter candy today and keeping it until Easter. It's no. the same thing with the Halloween candy that comes out in the middle of September. You're buying that candy to eat. Yeah. You're not buying no, it for a, Halloween. There's a zero chance that you're saving right. that for actual Halloween in right. August. I got my Halloween candy. I'm hanging on to it. Um, but uh, I, I, speaking of Lent, I got out of the habit of uh, like giving things up for Lent. Because we had a priest... Uh, give up swearing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true. You've not sworn at all. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we had a priest who used to say... That his father, I think it was his father, gave up smoking every year for Lent. And then Easter Sunday would light up again. Oh, man. Yeah. If you could go that far, you've done it. <laughs> and, you know, you can sort of guess the moral of the story. Ended up dying of lung cancer. Ah. And so the priest's comment was, it's fine to give something up if that means something to you. But maybe it's better to just try to... Try to be a nicer person or something like that during that time period. I thought that was pretty meaningful. And then realized many years later that I kind of just used that as an excuse to not give up. <laughs> yeah, then that's it. One, one year I did give up chips for um, Lent. That was for, um, it was many years ago. But it, it did teach me a lesson that how automatic my hand would go into a, oh. a bag of chips. So um, note to self, I still, I still do that. <laughs> In 1991, yes, 1991, I know this because I went to the NCAA uh, Final Four in Indianapolis, Indiana, which was Duke, North Carolina, Kansas, and UNLV. Anyway, that's who was in the Final Four. Okay. But so the whole thing was, so so we had, um, what did, we ended up giving up like pizza or something like that. Something fantastic. Right. And, but we were, so we were down in, in, um, This is pre before we met, so. Yes, this is before we met. Down in, um, we ended up staying not in Indiana. Couldn't get a hotel room in Indianapolis because it was a spur of the moment decision to go to the Final Four. So we ended up staying in East Lafayette, Indiana, which is like an hour away. I mean, oh, wow. it was kind of a long drive. So we ended up stuck at this place on a Friday night, um, and the only meat, the only good meatless option was pizza, you know, without, with, with vegetables, but without, you know, sausage or pepperoni. Right. So I ended up eating, breaking, breaking the, the rule and eating um, uh, pizza. But that was kind of one of the last times I actually did the whole, well, yeah. no, that's not true. I mean, I, I think I did for some years after that, but I, I felt like, you know, marginally guilty, but then I'm like, well, isn't there some kind of like dispensation when you're traveling? Right. Or... That's like a, you're off the hook kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> like they would give, uh, you know, in the old days, if you were Catholic, you couldn't eat meat on Friday at all. It wasn't just during Lent. It was forever. And so, of course, you know, in South Bend, they would give a special dispensation to the football players so they could eat meat on Friday before games on Saturday. That's funny. So, you know... We don't always take Actually, these Easter things. is like one of my favorite holidays because there's like no gifts. I mean, there's Easter basket stuff, but I mean, that's the thing. Decorating Easter eggs was always fun. My dad was an artist, so growing up, it was like a very elaborate thing, and he would spend hours just on one egg uh, while we finished like all of the rest of them and um, awesome food. So, um, yeah, but the, but there's it's Thanksgiving is better though because you have all the food and then you have three more days off. That's true. So I never liked <laughs> the fact that. that, you know, you were, you, well, sometimes you'd, in school you'd be on spring break. 
So sometimes it would be nice because you'd have the big family get together and then you'd have the whole next week off. Right. But that only that was like if you're lucky, that was like every other year. Mm -hmm. And the off years, you'd be back in school the next day, and it's not exactly fun to have to like do homework over the weekend of a holiday. That's true. So I that was always the the negative thing for me. And when I was in college at U of I, spring break was always the exact same week. Oh, so, that's nice. So it never changed. Yeah, it was always the whatever the effectively the last week of March was. I mean, it would change a little bit because obviously the last week of March wouldn't always end on a Sunday, you know, right? But it, so that the actual dates would change, but it was always right at the end of March. So you'd come back essentially at the beginning of April. So you never really knew for there were there were you know it was a, it was a you weren't always going to have Easter fall over that time. Right. That's actually kind of nice because then by the time you get back from school, you're like only have like six weeks left. Not only that, but in in that time period anyway, early to mid 80s, because I was there for a long time. It wasn't like John Belushi and, you know. It didn't take you seven years to get your undergraduate. Eight years of college (laughs) down the drain. But but, uh, in Animal House. But uh, I did go to college and law school there, so I was there for a long period of time. Anyway. So uh, I completely lost my train of thought. Oh, so when you'd get back from spring break, it'd be beginning of April, and it, and usually the weather was really nice by then. So you know, there was some advantage. Yeah, but then it's like hard to like study and like do all that stuff because you're just like it feels like so nice out. So we switched from last time talking about birthdays. Now we're talking about Easter and everything, but we got to go back to birthdays for one thing because I saw and I should have found the actual meme image, but I saw this. Meme going around yesterday or uh, yesterday or Thursday, I don't recall, um, that, that said um, the movie that was number one in the box office on your 21st birthday is how your 2021 is going to go. Right. So I looked it up. <laughs> and what was mine? Flashdance. Flashdance. <laughs> so apparently I'm going to become a welder. Right. I'm going to quit my job to become a welder because I don't think I'm going to quit my job to become a dancer. <laughs> and then I looked at mine and it was Fletch Lives, which was like a Chevy Chase, Chevy movie. Chase movie. And I was like, and it was the number one at the box office the week of my birthday when I was 21 and the week after. So I don't even remember that movie. I obviously didn't see it in the movie theater, but I thought that was weird. And so that doesn't really, that's not as fun as Flash Dance <laughs> having that. But, but, I had to look this up. So Jennifer Beals was the big star of Flashdance, mm-hmm. uh, which doesn't really fit my... And, but, but, just, I mean, I'm going to interrupt myself. I saw that movie around my birthday, which is actually kind of funny, just because, you know... It was, I love the movie. <laughs> I don't know there. I mean, I think at the time, you know, it was an 80s. It was like, it was like... A, Although, a, yeah, now if I saw it, a different perspective. A very typical 80s movie. But in any event, um, so this big star was Jennifer Beals, who, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure I have this right, is from the Chicago area. Yes. And I think one of my high school friends, who I will not name, um, took an acting class at the Goodman Theater, and Jennifer Beals was in his acting class. Oh, wow. So there you go. There you go. So we got George Harrison's aunt. We got uh, Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer Beals. Beals. Yep. We got Liverpool legends. <laughs> we got uh, all kinds of things. So many things. Uh, yeah, we'll have to think of all the things we talked about for our description. Because <laughs> we were a little... Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, so yeah, so that's what's been going on with us. Um, we're just going to enjoy the rest of the weekend. And... Um, We've got more nice weather next week, so um, higher temps. So I'm sure by next, I'm just going to predict by next Saturday we have no snow on the ground. And I'm going to predict that before April 1st, we'll have at least one more major snowstorm. All right. And temperatures in the single digits. All right. We'll see what happens. And maybe after April 1st. Right. Because there's no way it's over. Yeah. No <laughs> I way. I know. I'm wishful thinking. I'm like, spring's coming. The trees are going to have leaves and all that stuff. So, no, not so fast. Um, Happy Lent. Yes. <laughs> so, have a good night, rest, rest of the night, and good weekend. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.